I'm Hannah Lang, a data analyst at MindSense, and I'm going to show you the capabilities of our ShovelSense technology by combining ShovelSense bucket grades with the GPS location of each bucket. So here we show several months of data in three dimensions from, from an operating mine that was equipped with our ShovelSense technology. And in this model, each point represents an individual shovel that dug during the course of those months. And the points are colored by the GPS material type that the mine assumes that the shovel was digging in based on the block model and mine plan. So any point that is colored in blue is a shovel that dug in waste material and would get sent to the dump. And the red points are shovels that dug in high grade material that would get sent to the crusher or the stockpiles. So now I'm going to change the color of the points to represent the copper grade that shovel sense assigned to each bucket. So here you can see that the um, red and orange and yellow points represent high copper grade buckets and blue and green represent low copper grade buckets. And what is really cool is that you can see lateral continuity in the copper grades as you extend um, down the benches and into the pit. And this is consistent with the trend of the ore body and other geological features within the pit based on the block model from the mine. So currently I'm just showing the buckets from one of the shovels at this mine. If I bring your attention over to this second pit in the mine, you can actually see that we have populated with a second shovel as well. So if I toggle between having this shovel on and off, you can see that the grade of copper between the two shovels is very consistent. And that even when the shovels are digging at different times or in slightly different pits, that there is continuity in grades between the two shovels. Now I'm going to show you a few use cases of how ShovelSense was able to provide value by utilizing this high resolution data to redirect trucks in real time. For this first example, we're looking down into the top bench of the pit, um, colored by the material type that the mine has assigned for the shovels to be digging in. So you can see that there's this main um, pocket of waste with a high grade um, pocket within it. And if we change the cover, color of the points to represent the shovel sense grades, you can see that we reveal a few geological features of these stringer veins that otherwise wouldn't have been able to be visualized based on the block model. And this is because these veins are occurring at a higher resolution than the blast hole data is able to capture them at. And in this particular example, ShovelSense was able to cause um, 14 diversions to high grade and nine diversions to waste just in this area of the pit over the course of two days. And you can also see that the veins do um, translate into lower benches as well and could be used in the future for mine planning. So for this next example, we're looking at a barren dike that is cross-cutting high-grade ore. And you can see that the transition um, zone between the dike and the ore is clearly staked out between waste and high-grade in the mine plan. But when we switch to the shovel sense grade of these buckets, there is a slightly different transition zone. And zones like these are particularly hard for mines to stake out because if the blast hole spacing is occurring between the um, dike and the waste, then it can be difficult to know exactly where this transition occurs. And also blast movement can play into um, slight changes in these transition zones. So this particular example occurred over the course of about 10 different days that um, the shovels were operating in this area. And along this transition zone, there were um, 41 diversions of trucks sent to high grade that otherwise would have been sent to waste and 20 diversions of trucks to the dump um, that were waste that otherwise would have been sent to the high grade um, crusher or stockpiles. 
For this final example, you can see the shovel data overlaying the mine stake plan. And here you can see an area in the pit where you are mostly in high grade with a couple pockets of waste. And as we switch over to the shovel sense grade, you can see that there is a large shift in where this waste pocket is that is most likely due to blast movement. And using the shovel sense data, you're able to capture blast movement that otherwise was not able to be captured by the mine plan. And also we have an example of um, low grade dilution here where in the mine plan due to the blast hole data, the mine had assigned a pocket of waste. But what we see with the shovel sense data is that these low grade um, buckets are integrated throughout this area of high grade, but not at a scale that requires um, an entire portion of the pit to be sent to the waste. So this area of the pit was um, dug through over the course of approximately three days. And during this time, there were approximately 35 trucks that were diverted to high grade and 51 trucks that were diverted to waste. So up until this point, I've only been um, displaying shovel sense data of the copper grades of each bucket, but we actually receive data on other elements as well. And one of the elements that is particularly of interest is iron, since the ratio of iron to copper can indicate um, the presence of different copper minerals or iron minerals such as pyrite and magnetite. So now instead of showing the copper grade of each bucket, I'm going to actually color the points by the iron to copper ratio, only looking at um, buckets that had copper above the cutoff. And so what you can see here is that there's actually um, differences in the iron to copper ratio of the different pits. So this center pit here has a much higher iron to copper ratio than areas of uh, the pit to the left here. And we're looking to use relationships like this one as proxies for ore characteristics that can be used to optimize mill performance.